now here's Jack Smith, and you asked for it. This bizarre mode of transportation is called Orball. Its driver, or passenger here, is also its designer, Tony Hill, a 36-year-old school teacher from England. When the kids in the neighborhood got wind of his new invention, they wanted to try it too. Tony obliged them with a compact model. Aroch is six feet eight inches tall, weighs 275 pounds, and even has a small vocabulary. Let's go, Benji. Come on, Ben. Let's go. He is, however, a domestic and so has a difficult time with the great outdoors. That's the first time we've ever seen a dog curb its master. Indoors, Aroch performed like a champ, although he's still acquainting himself with certain fixtures, such as this wall. Aroch can be controlled two ways, by a pre-recorded cassette program, or by a remote control keyboard. We're told he can do the laundry, answer the door, or, as we witnessed here, pour a drink. And if he should get a little spill on Mrs. Scores' set, well, he can always do the laundry. I am coming out to pick up the mail. One of my daily chores. Tony's gonna let his two nephews, Frank and Leonard Perello, demonstrate the skates. Frank, who's being rigged up here, has only been on gas-powered skates four times before this. Gives you an idea of how easy it is to master them. Notice again that it goes on one skate only. How smooth can you start? Well, watch this. Frank moves away from a standing start and accelerates fast. This tiny control stick can fly the pilotless copter in any direction. It's all done by radio signals, ground to plane. Turn the ring and see what happens. The copter rises straight up, but now watch. The moment I release the stick, a conventional helicopter can take over radio control. Yes, a high-flying control station that allows the drone maximum flying range. Now an airborne operator is in complete charge. His control panel radios commands to the pilotless copter just as we did from the ground. The robot can stay in flight for two hours and with the restraining rope released, rise to 15,000 feet, control switching from ground to air or to other ground stations as it moves from one area to another. Well, now I'll take over again and try and bring the robot down and if I can do it, anybody can. They may look funny, but these cars are designed and driven by people who are very serious about the future. They believe that this mode of transportation can be an answer to oil and air pollution problems. It's not science fiction, but science fact. These are the fastest bicycles in the world. And today, we're in Compton, California at the Dodson Compton Bicycle Races to see how they operate and watch their performance. vehicles are built low to the ground to reduce the aerodynamic drag and create an effect called streamlining. A normal bike rider is actually pushing air, which causes wind resistance and slower speeds. But streamlining will enable these cars to hit speeds of 60 miles per hour. The world record of 58 miles per hour is currently held by Versatron Research Corporation, designers of the Vector. They have two HPVs in this six-lap race. The car body is molded fiberglass with a plastic canopy cover and a tubular steel frame. It has a built-in roll bar for safety. 
everything is custom designed for the particular size of the rider. He reclines in a gently curved seat, giving full support to the back. It may seem strange to drive from that position, but as you can see, they can move. All I want to know is where they put the air conditioner. Well, the speed seems good, but you have to travel by yourself and sometimes steering is a problem. Luckily, there were no injuries except a bruised ego. Inventor Benson himself is the pilot on this run. He waves to the towboat to take him out. A little assist and the roto blade starts spinning. The towboat is powered by an outboard motor. Okay, let's get moving. Now, how could a thing like that actually fly? Well, here's our answer, right off the water and into the air. An airspeed of 20 miles an hour gives it the necessary lift. Almost like riding a bike and almost as easy, but what a difference. According to this inventor's analysis, swimming is a non-symmetrical activity, unnatural and therefore difficult to learn. His machine, he believes, will force the arms and legs to move correctly, and so train muscles and brain properly and quickly. The machine itself is obviously not meant for the water. It would take a swimmer instantly to the bottom. But will it achieve its intended purpose and help this non-swimmer acquire the skills which have eluded him all these years? It seems unlikely, but the first airplane was equally improbable. Mission accomplished. That's shooting around corners. You have some more charges in there, sir? Right. All right, one more. Now, this, we're in a foxhole here, say, and we want to go over the top. But we've got to clear that area first. It'll be interesting to have a gun that shoots over the top. That's the safety you put on there, I see, hmm? Right. Colonel, that is a unique gun indeed. And the great advantage is that you can fire without uh, uh, showing yourself at all. That is right, Art. Has the Army adopted this, sir? Not yet, Art, but the uh, barrel is in the final stages of development and test. Well, I tell you, we're very proud indeed to have seen the first public demonstration of this dream gun there on our show. Colonel Halstead, I thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you, Art Baker. Mr. Latham built this brushing machine, and it took Jeep just about two minutes to brush up on how to use it. Jeep's weight on the platform starts the motor and brushes. Brush me gently, mother dear. Now the side whiskers. Mm. Boy, don't go on, that feels good. Pity a dog can't even brush himself without everybody staring at him. Now the other ear. Mm. Boy. I bet even the fleas are enjoying this. Everything from head to tail. Hmm, what technique. Every little movement has a meaning all its own. Meet the perfect dog. He's obedient, loyal, easy to train, and cheap to feed. In fact, a few squirts of oil on the right parts keeps this mechanical mutt moving for almost a year. His name is R4, pronounced Arfur and Steve built him out of odds and ends around the house. It wasn't quite as easy as going out and buying a real dog, but then anyone could own a real dog. Now, taking a dog for a walk is hardly unusual, but somehow Arthur always manages to draw a crowd. His body is two saucepans, his head is a soda siphon, his tail is a lemon squeezer, and his legs are vacuum cleaner parts. 
He's a real recycled pet. The whole contraption is driven by a small electric motor and a 12-volt motorcycle battery. Steve supplies Arthur's brain power through remotely operated radio controls. It took Steve almost nine months of tinkering to build Arthur into the dog he is today. Arthur does everything a real dog does, even stopping at park benches. But he is housebroken, which is more than you can say for most dogs. As a matter of fact, most dogs don't know quite what to make of Arthur. Well, dogs aren't easy to impress, even for robots. But we've been impressed by Steve Brooks and Arthur because you asked for it.